All right, another track day with the Integra Type S. I've done a few mods since the last time I was out here at Laguna Seca. We got the Acuity Super Cooler Reverse Flow Radiator Hoses, PRL Intercooler, Miltec Partially Resonated Exhaust, Cusco Front Strut Tower Bar, and we have the updated Olin's Springs. So 7K front, 7K rear. Originally, I had 6K front, 10K rear. Last time I was out here, I did a 140.7 second lap time. Hopefully, I can beat that even by 0.1 seconds. I'd be happy with that. Shout out to Lightspeed Track Events for hosting another great track day today. And I'm hoping with the new spring rate setup, the car will not lose too much of the rotation. With the 6K, 10K setup, the car really liked to rotate off throttle. I'm curious if having a square setup will change that behavior at all. And also with the Miltec valved exhaust, with it fully open, I should be able to hear the engine a lot better while wearing a full faced helmet. Also, we're still on the same Kumho V730s, endless CC40 brake pads, Apex VS5RS wheels. session. Wow.
turn in. Just some quick final thoughts on the new setup for the Integra Type S. Didn't do all that great of a lap time. My best was a 41.5, which is 0.8 seconds off my previous PB. That said, I only got to drive the car for about 30 minutes today. So I probably could have shaved another half a second at most, but I would say the car's handling balance now is definitely a little bit off. And given that my alignment and tires are exactly the same as before, Kumo V730s, the fronts only have one track day on them, the rears definitely have some more wear and tear, but they're still gripping very well. And I know the difference in lap time is not the fault of the rear tires because the way the car was handling was a lot more understeer. Pretty certain that it's due to the new spring rate. 7K front, 7K rear versus 6K front, 10K rear was my previous setup. The car definitely understeers more basically everywhere on turn in, mid corner, and when I apply throttle. Well, I basically can't apply throttle as early coming out of corners now. I think my next step is to mess with the damping settings. I haven't touched them since I swapped over to the new springs. And if that doesn't work, then I might just have to go back to the old 6K, 10K setup. That setup definitely felt a little compromised on the street, but not significantly, but the way the car handled on track was significantly better. It felt a lot pointier at that front end and that was induced by the rear end being more eager to turn. But at least with a new Miltec exhaust with the valve fully open, I can hear this engine a lot better now. Still not as well as I would like. It's a turbocharged four cylinder engine. It doesn't make a whole lot of induction sound. I'm used to the old BRZ with the AWE exhaust, my S2000, which didn't have any exhaust, but because of that VTEC motor, I could always hear the engine as I was nearing redline. 
not the case with a turbo four cylinder engine. Also, unfortunately, the car still might have a little bit of an overheating problem. It's just over 60 degrees ambient temperature today, which was similar to the last track day. And just like at the last track day at Laguna, about 10 to 15 minutes into a session going all out, the water temp raised from four ticks out of 10 to five ticks out of 10. It never went above five ticks, but that's likely also because I only did a lap or two after that and then backed off. Not super promising. Next week, I'm going to Thunder Hill West and it's supposed to be 108 degrees Fahrenheit that day. So more likely than not, I'm gonna have to do two to three hot laps at a time bring it back in, cool down, and go back out, and likely just end the day short around noon. There's no way this car can be tracked for 20 minute sessions, likely not even 10 minute sessions in that type of weather. And it's a little bit frustrating because I did two mods at the same time that could affect cooling. Unfortunately, the effects of those two mods might slightly be canceling each other out because the PRL intercooler, while it is definitely proven to reduce your intake air temps and give you more consistent power, potentially even a little bit more peak power, the style of intercooler means less air can flow through the intercooler and into the radiator which sits behind it. I should have done my research ahead of time. I think the PRL intercooler is probably a better mod if you plan to keep your car mostly street driven. It's all part of the learning process. Do your research ahead of time and actually look into what kind of use cases that the reviewers of those products are using their cars in. Track driving is a very different situation from street and canyon driving and something that may improve performance on the street may actually have the opposite effect on track. So with that being said, guys, a shout out regardless to Olin's, to Miltech, to Acuity, and to PRL. We all went into this knowing that I was gonna put these parts through a pretty rigorous test on track. And that's exactly what I did. And these are my findings. That being said, still had a great time. Even though the temps crept up a bit, I didn't feel any noticeable loss in power. The car still did well. The main thing was just fighting a little bit more understeer than last time, but such is life. We'll do some more trial and error and hopefully get the car dialed in to where I want. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.